So um, we have a fairly small group, but how many people here are um, on Facebook or some other social networking site? I know some of you are because you're here tonight because of it. Um, if you're like me, you probably don't even know how many friends you have on Facebook. I, but by the nature of what I do, I have friends that I've certainly never met, 400 and something. I think of those, I know 100 of them. Of those, I've probably met 50 of them and probably only two dozen that I see on a regular basis or so. We sort of live in a Facebook kind of world these days where we can make a friend with the click of a mouse and we can unfriend or defriend somebody just as easily. Uh, it seems that the word friend has started to become a little watered down and it seems to mean a little bit less with each passing day. So often in this rush, rush world of ours, though, despite all those connections, despite all the friends we may have online or at work or in our parish, we often still feel isolated. We can feel like we're facing the world alone. And spiritual friendship really is, um, enters the picture, or those friendships where God kind of enters into the relationship and sort of grounds the friends in something deeper um, than what we share with a lot of our other sort of regular friends. Um, and I think that's why when I tell people about the topic of spiritual friendship, it kind of resonates with them and they want to know more because in this um, seemingly uh, new concept, they sort of hear something that almost sounds like an answer to a prayer, a way to connect at a deeper level. And yet spiritual friendship is not a new topic, it's not a new subject, it's really ancient. It, um, not only in our own tradition, but in other traditions. The um, ancient Celts called it Anamkara, uh, and we can find it not only in the New Testament, but in the Old Testament. And I wanted to actually read a short, very short passage from the book of Sirach, which is the passage that really sealed my decision to write this book. I had kind of been introduced to the topic of spiritual friendship. It really started to take on a lot of meaning in my life, and I wanted to write a book on it, but I wasn't quite sure if I was ready to commit to that uh, year or two that you end up giving up to a topic. And I was praying on it and deciding, and it had to be Lent, and I came here one Friday for Stations of the Cross, and this was the passage um, that was on the worship aid, and as far as I was concerned, it was the sign. So, <laughs> on the sign I was looking for. So this is from the Book of Sirach. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter. He who finds one finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price. No sum can balance his worth. A faithful friend is a life-saving remedy, such as he who fears God finds. For he who fears God behaves accordingly, and his friend will be like himself. So we can see this idea of friendship that is rooted in faith, rooted with a God in the center, is this um, has these deep roots in our tradition, but is also incredibly relevant to our world today. Spiritual friends are really soulmates, not in the, in the way our world sees so soulmates in that romantic sense, but in that deeply, um, truly spiritual sense people who walk with us on our journey toward God, and um, in this world where so many of our friendships are reduced to status updates and 140 character tweets, uh, spiritual friendship dips below that surface to touch the soul. Um, so who would our spiritual friends be? You know, there are, there are the people who share our hunger for God, and for many of you who are from St. Thomas, who've been involved with Cornerstone especially, you know what that's about, because that, uh, Cornerstone, actually, for those who aren't, who hasn't been there, is a retreat, a uh, women's retreat, one day, and we've been doing it now at St. Thomas for a few years. And um, for those of us who've been lucky to go on a Cornerstone retreat, it really is an amazing opportunity to start and plant some of the seeds of the, exactly these kinds of friendships. You know, think of the, the friend you meet at the parish picnic or somebody um, somebody that you met through some at work who sort of shares that spiritual connection with you, makes you laugh, shares the same interests, but again, goes deeper than that. You know, you, you share that desire to kind of move forward on your spiritual life. And so that's the kind of thing, you know, you find yourself talking about a spiritual book you read, um, sharing music or sharing, a, a, going to a movie together that is a spiritual topic. You just always seem to come back around <coughs> to that spiritual place. And those seemingly casual friendships, we find the seeds of spiritual connection, an invitation to something deeper. And if you look around in your life right now, you can probably spot at least one person uh, who connects with you on, on that faith level, on that spiritual level. Someone who's just as comfortable joining you for coffee or a movie as they are perhaps praying with you or praying for you or sharing some of their, um, their spiritual struggles and, and strength. And I think when we 
begin to deepen our friendship with God and we, and we start going to this, maybe this new place um, of seeing God more as a companion as, as opposed to somebody who's going to um, look for us doing something wrong. Uh, I think it begins to open doors in our own lives, but also to other people, start making us more aware of what's already around us. And then we may start to realize that, you know, um, we could have a spiritual friendship or a closer friendship with a coworker or with that person on the yoga mat next to us at the Y or wherever it is that we might find somebody where we connect in some other way. I have a, a good friend, Robin, who um, is not Catholic, and we met through a series of sort of happenstance things. We were in the same groups at the same time. She's also a writer, so that was sort of our initial connection. And um, despite the fact that we're in a rather large group of people, lots of moms with young kids at the time, there was something that connected us in a different way than all the other friends. And I'm good friends with a lot of those people. Go out, might go out for dinner, go out for coffee, but there definitely was something different about my relationship with Robin. We always tended to talk about where do you fit prayer in? You know, how do you do it when you have three kids getting up early in the morning and you're trying to figure out how to fit prayer in before anything else? Or, you know, where do you find the time for meditation or whatever it is? Um, and we will go out to breakfast every once in a while and inevitably, despite the, talking about writing, despite talking about our kids, it always comes back around to the spiritual thing. And, um, and that's really, again, something that came sort of out of the blue, something I wasn't expecting. She's not somebody that I share, you know, that I see here at the parish. Um, a few years ago, when the really beautiful movie, um, Integrate Silence, came out, if any of you have seen it, it's the, a movie about the Carthusian monks in the French house. And um, one of my other spiritual friends here, my husband Dennis, when he found out that this movie was three hours of almost total silence with several lines in French and subtitles. Um, he suggested that perhaps I had another spiritual friend who might want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and Robin was the only one who I could imagine would sit through this entertainment endurance test. <laughs> and we did. We went to the spectrum and it went until about 11 o'clock at night, which really was not the right time to see an almost totally silent movie that it was. <laughs> and we sat there and really the only sound was like, water dripping, snow melting, if snow melting makes the sound, feet kind of scuffling along the monastery floor, an occasional bell, and then some lines in French. <laughs> and, and we drove home that night, and really the, our whole conversation was not so much about the cinematography, and it's, ama it's an amazing movie to see, really, um, but it was more, it was about the message and this, what we were taking from that movie. You know, kind of, I think we both went into the movie thinking we were going to see this example of holiness that we could never live up to. And we came out of the movie, both of us, I think, with a very different take, you know, realizing that as much as we could not live in their lives, no way could they live in our lives. <laughs> I don't think they would survive a day at any one of our dinner tables. But it was a really great conversation about our spirituality, how we live it in the world, that our spiritual lives happen more over a cup of coffee with a friend, around our dinner table, in our garden, wherever it happens, that we don't we don't live in a monastery. And that's not a better spirituality, it's a different spirituality. That's not a conversation I would have had with anyone, even if I could have gotten them to go into that movie with me, other than somebody who kind of shares that hunger for something, who's on that same path and looking for those same things, you know, the same struggles of trying to walk a spiritual path in a very unspiritual world, really, or a world that's not really tuned into that kind of thinking. So our friendships can start at a babysitting co-op or a soccer sidelines or whatever it is we might meet somebody, but they can't really stay there. Our spiritual friendships kind of have to move to a deeper level, and that's kind of the next thing about spiritual friendship is that it really requires real communication. And in one sense, our world is all about communication, 24-7. We're connected at home, at work, when we're on vacation, when we're sleeping, um, and we're, in a sense, communicating constantly in these little short bursts and texts and emails. But we never really get down to sort of the more meaningful level of communication when we're, we're doing that. Um, and I have to say, first of all, that I am a huge fan of high-tech, high-speed communication. Honestly, I would rather you email me than call me. It's just the, just the way it is in my life. Um, Dennis and I go back and forth by instant message pretty much all day. 
I use Facebook, I use Twitter, I use all of those things, so I'm not here to shoot the instant messenger. I, uh, I just, I rely on it, but we have to remember that our spiritual friendships can't stay in, a, in that virtual world.